I have a do I have a least favorite thing about traveling? Yeah. Breaking down, packing and building bikes. <laughs> Flying with bikes is an absolute pain, but there are a few things that you can do to make it a little bit easier. When booking your flights, make sure that you look into each airline's baggage policy. Different airlines have seriously different baggage policies when it comes to bikes. There's nothing worse than booking the cheapest flight, getting to the airport, checking your bikes in and getting charged a massive fee to send your bikes. So when booking your flight, make sure you incorporate the baggage fees for the bicycle into the prices. The best situation is when an airline doesn't charge you for your bike. If you're only checking in a bike and it's under 23 kgs, sometimes they won't charge you if you're just checking in that one piece and taking hand luggage with you. On the way here with Alitalia, Sarah and I each checked in a bike, but because it was our only piece of baggage, it didn't cost us anything. The only downside to that is then you have to get all the stuff that you need into the bike boxes. But traveling with two bikes, we split our clothes and stuff between them not so bad. Secondly, to reduce stress when you're traveling to the airport is to arrive early. Leave yourself lots of time. Checking in bike bags and boxes, then going to pay for the overweight fees and then having to take them to the oversized luggage area. It takes a lot of time and it's super stressful if you haven't left yourself enough time. Sarah and I go to the airport pretty early because I'd much rather get everything done, sit on the other side and drink coffee than be sprinting through the airport, sweating and then get onto a flight. The other major decision you have to make in the run up to your flight is how you're gonna pack your bike. You kind of have three choices on that front. You can choose a full hard case bike bag, you can have a soft shell bike bag, or you can go with just the normal cardboard box that the bikes arrive in at the bike store. Each one really has its, its pros and cons. The hard shell cases are fantastic for protecting your bike. They do an amazing job on that front, but they are really bulky and they're often really heavy. So just with a bike box and your bike inside, they're often pretty much on that weight limit. The soft shell cases are a lot lighter, but they don't protect your bike quite as well as the hard case bike boxes do. And there is still some weight there just with the, the extra padding and the wheels, etc., etc. Your third choice is just the normal cardboard box that you can pick up from the bike store. By far the most flimsy and probably provides the least protection, but it's also free and it's super light. The cardboard box with your bike in it is usually sub 10 kilograms so it does leave you with some extra weight to to put a pump in or an extra set of wheels if you've got the space or your clothing your bike shoes your helmet all that kind of stuff can go in there as well we choose just the normal cardboard boxes same ones the bikes come in from the bike store we choose these because a they're light B, they're free from the bike store. You can just walk up and ask for them. And C, when you're done with them, you can just throw them away. We don't really have the space to lug them around to the different places we go, and we don't have the space to store them. The other thing, and, and this has happened to me, is when you arrive somewhere and you get a rental car or there's someone picking you up, sometimes your bike doesn't actually fit into the car. So with a cardboard box like this, you can take the bike out, put it in the car, and then just fold this up put it next to the recycling at the airport and leave it there. And when you're getting ready to leave again, you just go to a bike store, get a new one and do the same thing. But of all the three options, they do provide the sort of the least protection. You often get some little holes and stuff when traveling. They don't usually last more than a journey or two if it's a, it's a really good bike box. The hard shell cases and the soft shell cases do do a better job of protecting your bike when you're traveling. But the downside is that you have to store them when you're not using them and also they cost money they're not free like the cardboard boxes one of the nicest things about the proper bike boxes is that they come with wheels so they are a lot easier to manage in the airport you don't have to sort of pick them up and lug them around i've used both before i've used some some nice soft shell cases and i've also used the bike boxes i'm kind of in between the two but for our lifestyle the cardboard boxes work a bit better and ultimately if you spend a bit more time actually protecting your bike and packing your bike into the cardboard box. So far, touch wood, I haven't really had any problems. Put that plastic sort of, if you put the plastic sort of wedge thing between the front fork, 
it's usually it's usually pretty good and then if you keep the rear wheel in that should stop the frame collapsing anyway bit of bubble wrap a few sort of pieces of foam on the tubes and stuff and you should be pretty good to go the heavier you make the cardboard bike boxes like the more stuff you put in there the more risk there is that they will start to start to break and deteriorate i have picked mine up once from a flight and there was a pretty sizable chunk missing from the side luckily nothing had fallen out once you've got your bike box and your flights are booked and all of that last thing you have to think about is what extras you need to pack so tools things like that this is what i normally travel with it's a fair amount of stuff always travel with the stuff that i might need when i get there some grease some chain lube stuff like that spare tube full cassette tools to change a cassette sometimes you get to the race and and you're going to need to change your cassette because there's a bigger hill than you anticipated or, or whatever the reason always good to have along allen keys eight mil for changing pedals and just the normal set you would ride with light just in case and some pliers one of the things i have recently started traveling with is a torque wrench i actually borrowed this off sarah's dad and i think he thinks he's getting it back but i don't think so the torque wrench is great for when you're going to races and you just want to really make sure that everything is tightened and well built and you don't want to spend a lot of money and travel a long distance just to get halfway through a race and have your bars drop or your seat slip or something like that so having a sort of small torque wrench that goes up to 14 newton meters with just a basic set of of adapters just gives you a bit of peace of mind that when the bike is built it's built and it's good to go especially when i'm building sarah's bikes for her races when it's me i know it's my fault but if you're doing it for someone else it's always nice to know that it is done properly that is pretty much the gist of what i travel with last thing just some spare brake pads like aluminium ones and for carbon rims just in case something happens or you have to change a wheel and use an aluminium rim or a carbon rim which you didn't anticipate and floor pump this one's pretty light and really nice makes life a lot easier when you get somewhere you can actually pump your tires you don't have to use the good old trusty pump cam or another one of these tiny ones which you can only get like 70 psi out of another good little option is those adapters which you can screw onto the the Presta valves which turn them into the Schrader valves those you can use at the petrol station to to pump your bike tires so if you don't have the weight or the space for a pump and and this is not working for you that's always a good option and they're they're really cheap from the bike store two three euros couple dollars really well worth it Ow. time to go riding let's go shorts and a jersey never felt so good I had a quick squiz at Strava before I left to look at some roads there don't seem to be that many roads here which makes my life much easier I'm riding a portion of what will be Sarah's bike leg on Sunday the road or the route looks really cool a couple nice little climbs but also what looks like a really cool road along the coast so far the roads are like super smooth they're like they're like a racetrack just feels so good to be warm <laughs> <laughs> 